Hi everyone, this video is to help with the Algebra 1 Desmos uh, second quarter project. Um, this is going to be a little demo where I'm doing a different problem that's very similar um, just to show you some of the ins and outs of Desmos and how you could go about doing this both um, with more of an algebraic approach and with Desmos as well. So, um, <clears throat> this video is obviously to help you um, if you can read the project sheet and you're starting to watch this video now and you feel like you're comfortable with it, don't think that you know you have to sit and watch this entire video. Um, this is just for people that are having a little bit of an issue with Desmos, maybe something with the typing in of functions, the graphing of functions, or how to use Desmos in general. So if you're one of these people here, um, this video is definitely going to be very helpful. So I made a a very simple model problem based on what your project is about. <clears throat> Obviously with their project you have three people. This one I just made a quick um, example where it's just two people but obviously it's the same concept of having them meet up. So just like on your project you're giving the person in kind of last place and you're given the function for that person. So the good thing we already have that function. Um, we don't have to make you know another function we have one given to us. So on Desmos I've gone ahead and entered this in and again if you want to see a visual of what this looks like I'm literally just typing in 0 0.95x plus 2 correct? Yeah, plus 2. So this gives me a good idea of what this person will look like if they're whatever the case is here running. Um, and now I'm ultimately trying to find something I want them to um, meet up at exactly 7 seconds. So, I should see when I'm all done here, I should be able to graph a line and have it hit somewhere around right here. Okay, but there's a few conditions we have to follow. First of all, if this person is going to catch up to the person that's in front, um, he has to obviously be going at a slower rate. So we want to talk about what that means in regards to functions. And also, he's starting a little bit of head. Uh, he's starting a little bit ahead of you. So obviously, we have to model that as well. And I'll give you a little range here just to eliminate the possibilities. So when we refer to rate, we're actually talking about the slope. In class, we've talked about the slope being a rate of change. Um, it's not any different here. So this is really representing. We're not given any units or anything, but something like. Um, his rate in terms of meters per second or rate in terms of feet per minute, something like that. Um, slope is a rate. So basically we want a lower slope or a smaller slope, I should say. When we talk about starting position, we're obviously referring to the other component of a linear function, its y-intercept. So if we want the y-intercept, we have pretty much free choice here of making anything three to five yards ahead of the plus 2, which would be something like plus 5 to plus 8, somewhere in that range. And we can choose any of those values. So anything from here to here. And again, y-intercept just has to do with the starting position, whereas slope is something referring to a rate of change, something that's constantly being applied. And this is our real question here, now that we understand what those words mean. We want them to meet up exactly after 6 seconds. So, the tricky part, we can do one of two things, and I'm just going to show you a very quick example. I can do this. I could start playing around with some, again, I want the slope to be smaller, so I'm going to type in just randomly 0.75x, okay, and we see that purple line there, and we said the y-intercept has to be somewhere between Point, uh, plus 5 and plus 8. So I'm going to do plus 6. And again, I'm just putting a guess in here. And we see our two lines. So they're not hitting after, well they are hitting, but after 20 seconds. So obviously I have to try to adjust something here. So I can keep typing in guesses like that. Obviously not very efficient, because it might take you a very long time. I can use y equals mx plus b. I could adjust some of the sliders. I'm going to put b somewhere in the middle here around 6 and let me play around with the slope now. So this one's going to be a little bit quicker. I can get close. So right now they're hitting there. 
could adjust this a little bit more. Could adjust this. It's basically like a back and forth of you adjusting things and seeing how they work out. And once again, you can see it's going to get me pretty close, but it's never going to get me quite exactly where I want to go. Um, you could, unfortunately, with the y equals mx plus b, it only does the nearest tenth. So once you see this is pretty close, I can type something in like y equals 0 0.42x maybe plus 0.58. I'm getting too far now. Um, 0.1. I could maybe lower this a little bit. Playing around with them. I'm getting there. Um, 0.81. And okay, so you see, just I was literally just entering random numbers there. I was hoping not to delay too much, but I eventually get a hit. So this would actually be an answer. I would answer the question and I'd be done. As you could see, I'm a little bit more comfortable with this. Um, so me typing in, I recognize, hey, I might have to go to the nearest hundredth because the sliders aren't giving me a nice point. Um, and it's a little inefficient anyway. You're kind of just guessing. This does fit the qualifications. It's a slower rate, so he's going slower. The slope is a smaller value. It is between 5 and 8 because that would be 3 to 5 yards ahead of him, which it is. So see, they're starting. He's starting 3 to 5, three to five yards ahead of him. And they hit exactly after seven seconds. In this case, X represents time. And this represents, um, there's no units here, but something like yards. Okay, so that's one way of going about doing it. Now, the more algebraic approach would be um, doing what we've done in class, where we think about um, writing an equation of a line given two points. So the first thing, I have to choose the y-intercept. So let's say we want to choose, again, anywhere between 5 and 8. I'm going to choose 5 and a half. Nice clean number. So that gives me one point. And now my second point, I know is going to be 7, because I want them to hit at 7, but now I want to go to the graph for... Um, the original function and see where it was at at 7. This is where they're going to hit. So it's at 7, um, 8.65. So obviously if I want my lines to hit there, this line that I'm creating has to pass through this point. Then they will hit. So now we're basically, and I forgot the zero here. Um, <clears throat> now we're basically writing an equation of a line through these two points. Okay, the good thing, since this was the y-intercept, and again, when we write an equation, we're using this as our guideline, so it's a good idea to write this down. I have my b value defined already. b is just 5.5. Okay, so now all I have to do is just find the slope, which is going to be a little tricky, and now you see why we get those kind of messy answers. So when I find the slope, that's delta y over delta x, or change in y over change in x. Okay, the change in my x values is very easy. That's just seven. The change in my x values would be eight point six five minus five point five, which is three point fifteen over. My screen doesn't let me write over there. Um, three point fifteen over seven. I'm just going to go below. I'm getting cut off here. Um, <clears throat> now, I believe Desmos will let you type that in, but let's say we want to make that a little bit simpler because um, that's kind of a weird looking number. You can simplify that on your calculator. You could round that to the nearest hundredth and you'll get something obviously that will work. Um, I'm just going to pull up my calculator. Probably should have had it open. Um, and let's see what we get here. So the thing to keep in mind, I've assigned this project to, what, 60 of you guys? I could get 60 different answers that all work. 
there's not one way to do this because you have a lot of choice with where you choose the y. I chose the y-intercept to be 5.5. You could choose anything you like. Okay, it actually works out nicely to just 0.45. Okay, so what's the equation of this line? Let's put it all together. Um, and I'm doing it in blue, and again, it's not letting me write over there. Um, y equals 0.45x plus 5.5, plus 5.5. Okay, so that's good. Doing the work here, doing the algebraic work, didn't take much time. Something, it's a lesson we've done in class, and I actually got a more efficient answer. Um, and it was a little bit quicker than when we were just kind of guessing on here. So let's type it in and see what happens. Plus 5.5. Um, I'm kind of glossing over, but hopefully at this point you're familiar with how do you type. I'm literally just hitting these buttons on my keyboard, which I'm assuming you guys all have. A regular keyboard. Um, plus 5.5. Right, yep. And I see a nice perfect line, and I see an intersection where I want. Okay, at 7 seconds. They're hitting at exactly 7 seconds. Not 7.1, not um, some decimal near there, but at exactly 7. So there's multiple ways to do this. Depending on what you chose for the y-intercept, your slope is going to vary. Um, guess and check way is good if, you, if you're not comfortable with the arithmetic, but it's really not that bad. It's something that you know, you're going to be tested on, um, something that we've done in class and you guys all performed pretty well with, pretty confidently with. Um, and that's it for Desmos. Other than that, graphing-wise, uh, printing-wise, I should say, if you're not sure how to get this out of here, if you've you know you've done all the math but you're not sure how to display it, um, you can do a screenshot, which would print the um, graph, or you could select what part of your screen you want, and you could get just that image. You could take a picture on your phone and figure out how to get it from there printed. But basically, make a nice display. You can see these come out pretty cool. Um, you can also get tables. If you hit edit list, you notice it'll say table here. I could go to this graph, also select the table. Um, and you could play around with some of the x values and you could show that they're actually intersecting at 7. You just literally type in, similar to your calculator. Okay, so some cool things you can get. If you want a table in your picture, um, you can make it look very nice. Okay, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this will help with your project. Um, if you have any future questions, please let me know either by email or let me know in class and I'll do my best to help you out. Thank you for watching.